Hey there, my name is Mac, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to pack for a backpacking trip. Packing for backpacking trips used to take me hours, but now with a little bit of experience, I've been able to knock it down to about 20 minutes. So today, we're gonna go through the whole process and hopefully I can distill a little bit of my experience and pass it along to you. Before we go too much farther, I did want to say thank you to our good friends over at REI for supporting this video. The experts over at REI, both in store and online, can help you with things such as fitting yourself for a backpack, finding a new pair of hiking shoes, or even the perfect sleeping bag for your next backcountry adventure. Either way, they have a ton of outdoor experience and can help you get the right gear for your trip the first time. Being an REI member is now better than ever because members can get up to 33% off of gear rentals. That means that you can try out a new sport without having to worry about investing in all that gear up front or having to worry about where to store it. All right, without further ado, we have a backpacking trip to pack for. Your pack is obviously one of the most important pieces of gear when going backpacking. There are tons of different packs out there, but when you're looking for one for yourself, there's two big things that you wanna keep in mind. And the first is comfort and the second is weight. When you're hiking long distance or any distance for that matter, small problems become big problems very quickly the longer you hike and the heavier pack gets. So be sure that you're starting out with a pack that is as comfortable as humanly possible. Weight is the other major thing that you will want to keep in mind. Obviously, if your pack is starting off heavy, it's only gonna get heavier as you pack. So if you wanna avoid having compounding issues and discomfort as you hike, start with the pack that is both lightweight and comfortable. Other things that you might want to consider but are entirely up to your needs are accessible exterior storage, waterproofing, and versatility so you can use your pack for other activities. I've been using the Hyperlite Windrider 2400 since 2017 and I absolutely love it. I've done a ton of hikes with it including the John Muir Trail and have even used it as a rope bag for climbing. This year, I decided to upgrade to the Windrider 3400, not because my last pack wore out, but actually just because I've started carrying a lot of extra camera gear with me on trail and needed a little extra space. The Windrider packs are incredibly comfortable, lightweight, durable, and have the perfect amount of structure. It has a lot of easily accessible storage, of which I take full advantage of. The pack is made of Dyneema, which is virtually waterproof and eliminates the need for a rain fly. I added some paracord to the bottom of my pack with a cord fastener to secure my sleeping pad to my pack while hiking on trail. In summary, I love this pack and I could not recommend it enough. Wearing a hip pack over your waist belt is very popular with through hikers and is something that I really love doing, but is not necessary. I use the Patagonia Lightweight Travel Mini Hip Pack, but I use it for easy access storage. In my hip pack, I often store my phone, chapstick, multi-tool, a roll of film, and even a snack. All right, now let's move inside of our pack. Now this is where things get interesting. If you are hiking alone, you will need to carry all of the things that I'm about to go over. However, if you're hiking with a friend or a group of friends, there's some of these things that you will be able to share and then divide the weight amongst yourselves. For instance, when Owen and I hike together, which let's be honest, is all of the time, we have some things that we like to divide between the two of us. So Owen will take the tent and then I'll take the cooking setup and then we'll divide the weight of all of our food between the two of us. When we backpack with friends, we usually try to bring just one cook setup between the entire group and split up the pieces. And the same goes with our water filtration system. Just remember when you're hiking with friends, sharing is caring. Before we get into the individual items that you will need to carry inside of your pack, I wanted to quickly touch on the importance of having an organizational system inside of your pack. The way that I like to organize my pack is to divide everything into lightweight waterproof bags. And this is just in case my pack ever leaks 
or I have to ford a really deep river. But it's always nice just to know where everything is inside the individual bag. So when you go looking for it, you know exactly what you need to grab out. For this, I love the Sea to Summit event bags. I typically only will need one of these compression sacks, but let's talk about what I keep inside of it. Inside this bag is where I keep my extra layers of clothes. This is typically going to be something like a hard shell or a pair of pants or anything really that I'm not already wearing while I'm hiking. In addition to what I already mentioned, I like to bring an extra shirt, pair of underwear, and socks for hikes that require a week or more on trail. This way I can trade them off daily and rinse them when I'm not wearing them. This simple act of switching in and out of clothes, even if they're a little bit dirty when you put them back on, can have a huge positive impact on your morale. The additional clothes that you bring on your hike will greatly have to do with the climate and the duration of your trail. So be sure to do a little bit of extra research so you know exactly what you need to bring with you. Depending on how light you're wanting to travel, you may or may not want to bring a backpacking pillow. Sometimes I use my clothes compression bag as my pillow, and other times I love to bring this minimalist hiking pillow with me. My personal favorite is the Big Agnes Axle Air Pillow. If I do decide to bring a pillow, it will live here inside with my extra clothes because I won't need it until I get my bag unpacked at camp. Well, that covers the basics of what I like to keep in my waterproof compression bag inside of my pack. Uh, there could be some other situational things that you'll want to keep in here, but I just wanted to stress that this is a good dry place to keep things nice and safe. For instance, when I'm shooting film on the trail, this is where I will keep the vast majority of my film to be sure that it's nice and protected. I will also use this bag to store an auxiliary battery pack and even a journal if I decide to bring it. No matter what you end up putting in here, just remember that it's likely going to need to be things that you'll not need until you unpack your pack at camp. Regardless if you're gonna be hiking in bear country or not, I do recommend having a separate bag to store all of your food in. I've recently started using the Ursac bear resistant bags to store my food in. This is because they're far less cumbersome than other bear resistant options out there. But this is where I store my food, toiletries, and other smelly items. Before you venture out, be sure to look up the food storage regulations for where you'll be hiking. There are a ton of different bear storage bags, bins, and boxes. Different places require different tools for the job. Obviously, your food will get stored in your food bin or bag, but how much food and what you need to bring is entirely up to your trip, the level of challenge, and your personal taste. I will not be getting into the details of what food to pack for your backpacking trip because it's a massive topic all of its own. I have a blog post that I wrote on the food that we took with us for the Jamir Trail, and I will link it in the description of this video below. Hopefully that will give you a little bit of insight into how we packed for that trail. I also use my bear bag to store anything that has food related smells, such as my cook setup, my utensils, or my mug. This is just to be sure that anything that has a food smell that could attract a bear or rodent is protected. For my cook setup, I love the simplicity of the Jetfoil flash cooking system. All of the pieces fit neatly inside, making it a nice and compact unit. If our food bag is getting a little on the full side, the jet oil will be the first thing that I'll pull out and pack separately loose in my bag. This is because it's all completely enclosed and typically the only thing that's ever gonna be in it is water anyways. For utensils, I love the Toke's long neck spoon because it can reach deep into those backpacker meals. I also carry my tried and true GSI backpacker mug because it doubles as a measuring cup. That way I can be more precise with measuring out my water for backpacker meals. Last but not least, you'll want to keep your toiletries inside of your food bag. And this is because these types of items typically have a smell associated with them. I like to have a small bag dedicated to storing my toiletries because it's easy to grab and then I have everything I need. Inside this little bag, I like to keep a toothbrush, mini toothpaste, face lotion, mini body lotion, and ibuprofen, which can be a lifesaver after long, hard days on the trail. If you aren't gonna be cowboy camping, you will need to bring a tent. But for those who don't know, cowboy camping is literally just sleeping on the ground without a tent. 
Your tent likely came in its own bag, which is a super convenient way to store inside of your pack and to keep everything nice and organized. We're currently using the Nemo Dragonfly tent, which is lightweight and has plenty of mesh for breathability and lots of headroom, of which I love. It also has a rain fly for cooler and stormy nights. Last but not least, you'll want to store your sleeping bag or backcountry quilt loose in your pack. Well, it's not super loose because it is packed. Sleeping bags can take up a lot of space, so I recommend storing them out of the bag in between uses, then packing them into a compression sack before putting it into your pack. I have and love the Sierra Design Backcountry Quilt, which I transfer into a Big Agnes compression sack when I'm packing it into my bag. It's incredible how much smaller they can pack. What you keep on the exterior of your pack is entirely up to you and your needs. I personally like to keep things on the exterior that I need to grab and have easy access to while we're out hiking without the need of unpacking my entire pack. As mentioned earlier, I love to keep my sleeping pad, which is the Thermarest Z-Lite sole on the exterior of my pack because it's big and awkward on the inside, but it's also nice to have access to while we're hiking because I can pull it out at a moment's notice if we happen to take a break. So I have something to sit on. Undoubtedly, you will need to go to the bathroom at some point when you're out on trail. So be sure to keep your bathroom kit on the outside of your pack for easy access. In my bathroom kit, I like to carry a small bag that contains a few wag bags, baby wipes, toilet paper, and tampons that are always packed and ready to go alongside my backcountry trowel. In certain fragile environments, such as the desert and high alpine terrain, you may not be permitted to leave human waste behind and thus will need to come prepared with a few wag bags. You'll just want to be sure that you check the rules and regulations of where you're going to be hiking to to be sure that you come with enough of these little beauties. Oh, and if you're not familiar, wag bags are literally to poop in so you can take out your own waste. For all my ladies out there, you may want to consider using a bandana or Kula cloth in lieu of toilet paper when you pee. This is so you have less waste to carry out with you because you should never leave toilet paper behind in the backcountry or anywhere else in the outdoors for that matter. I've been using a bandana instead of toilet paper in the backcountry for years now and have never looked back. I lovingly call this my pee pee dana and I keep it conveniently tied to the outside of my pack for easy access. Other things you'll want to consider keeping on the outside of your pack is sunscreen, bug repellent, and a bug net for your head. I've hiked in places where the bugs are so bad you can't even go without hiking with a bug net on your head. So bugs can make your life miserable, so it's best to come prepared. You will likely need to refill on your water when you're out hiking on trail when you come across a viable water source. So you'll be ready when you find that water source. I recommend keeping your water filtration system on the outside of your pack for easy access. I've been using the Sawyer squeeze system for a few years now. I really like it. It's super simple and I highly recommend it. Once you filter your water, you'll need a place to put it. And for that, I recommend any lightweight water bladder. In the past, I've used the platypus one liter bladders and I carry two of them, one on each side of my pack, one for clean water and one for adding electrolytes. But also these Sawyer bottles work just as well. I used to scoff at trekking poles, but now I'm a total convert. They're super handy with staying steady and uneven terrain doing deep water crossings, and even just taking a little bit of weight off of your back. Now I am such a convert that I don't do any hikes without them. I just have a few more odds and ends that I like to keep on the exterior of my pack before we're ready to hit the trail. The first thing is this Peak Design camera clip. If you don't hike with a camera, then you can completely ignore this. But if you do hike with a camera, this thing will change your life. This camera clip is the simplest way to keep your camera close at hand while hiking. All you have to do is slide it on and off the bracket without ever having to stop walking. I also recommend carrying a basic first aid kit just in the unlikely event that you need it. Last but not least, I highly recommend carrying some form of satellite communicator. I love the Garmin InReach Mini because I can send pre-made messages to let my family know that I'm alive and well. I can type out messages on my phone and send them through the Garmin app, send an emergency SOS, and even pull geo-specific weather reports. 
Now your bags are packed and you're ready for your first backpacking trip. I feel like I always make these things sound way more intense than they actually are, but I promise with some practice, you'll be able to pack yourself in 20 minutes or less. I guarantee it. But hopefully this gave you a lot of really great insight into how to pack a bag for a backpacking trip so you can go out there and have some fun of your own. If you're curious about any of the individual pieces of gear that I have covered today, I've written a detailed blog post that goes over each one of them and it will be linked in the description of this video down below. But just know, if I included them, it means that I personally use them, love them, and can vouch for them. Thank you so much to our friends over at REI for supporting this video, and thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it'll help you get out there and find some adventures of your own. But in the meantime, it's time to get hiking. All right, happy trails, my friends. Thirty-three. Pro nope, bro. Get out of here. Ugh. Oh, are you recording? Hawk boy, cruising. Ursac, Yersac, Ur Ursac. Okay. Wow, that's a mouthful. That was terrible. My face is so itchy. Last but not blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Cause you, oh, blah, tense. Then it, I'm gonna do it one more time, yeah.